Have you ever bought a kitchen gadget and loved using it for the first month or two and now it just sits in a cabinet somewhere collecting dust in your kitchen? You know, we've had a few devices like that. Popcorn maker, ice cream maker, bread machine. These are some of those great devices you think are going to be wonderful in your kitchen, but they just never live up to full potential. Well, let me tell you, for us, this plant-based soda maker from Mealmat is not that kind of device. We've had it for over a year, and now we've been using it weekly for a whole year. That's right, every week we have been using this machine to make plant-based milk. For us, that's soy milk. So let's go inside this machine after a year and let's take a look and see how did it hold up? What does it look like inside? Does it still work? Do we still enjoy the products that this machine is making for us? So let's look at some of the things we do with our meal mat now that it's been a whole year in our kitchen. Alrighty, so let's take a look at inside the meal mat itself. So as you open it up, you can see how we store it. Got the grinder ring, which Grinds up the soil really well. Take a look. Maybe notice a little dulling, but this is after rinsing every single time right after it's finished. Rinse it off, make sure that nothing gets stuck to it. That helps a lot. On the inside, you see we actually store our cord inside as well as the cup. That's used to measure all the ingredients that you need to put in the meal mat. So let's take a look at the inside itself. Hmm. Just a little bit, a tiny bit, not much of the stainless steel is a little dull. But we're in contact with Miomat, and they have given us a hint on how to clean the inside. So after we're done making our meal for today, let's see how well the cleaning tip will clean this up. So let's go ahead and make the weekly meal that I always make with the Miomat. And it is soy milk. Our preferred choice of plant-based milk is soy. You can use almond, you can use cashews, whatever you like for soy milk, oats, whatever you like for your plant-based milk, but we like soy milk. Here's the soybeans before they get soaked for 12 hours overnight, and here's what happens after they get soaked overnight. You can see they've gotten a lot bigger and a lot softer. Now there are some milk machines out there that will make your soy milk without pre-soaking the beans or the nuts, whatever you're gonna put in. But from what I can tell, I have tried those and I 100% prefer pre-soaked soybeans to regular dry beans to make in my soy milk. It's gonna be a lot less gritty and a lot more soy milk available if they've been soaked overnight. So make sure whenever you do your milks, you soak whatever material, soak it overnight. And for this one, we're going to add to the 1,300 milliliter line because we like 1,300 milliliters. That's about five cups for you American people out there. So we're going to fill it up to 1,300 milliliters. So we're going to have about, well, it's not going to be a 1,300 milliliters of soy milk in the end, but it's going to be quite a bit. Then all you're going to do, I'll make sure for the meal mat, a grinding center goes on. This is not true of the other plant-based milk makers I've used before. It doesn't have a grinding center, but this is one of the secrets that makes the soy milk have much more milk. And then you plug it in. And now it gets ready. All we have to do now is to let the soy milk and off it goes. And 35, 40 minutes later, we will have a wonderful hot soy milk that you can put in a container, put in the refrigerator, or drink it hot, just like we do. That beeping sound means the meal mat is finished. So you just unplug it. And I'm going to take this off. And very key, right when I take this off, you will see that there is you know, soy milk, uh, soybeans just sitting here right on it. This is not very hot, so I can go ahead and take the cylinder off. You can see that. The grinding cylinder comes off so that you can wash your meal mat right away. So let's go ahead and rinse it off. It doesn't take much. You just got to run the water. It comes right off. Usually you scrub it down a bit. 
Go with the arrows so it doesn't grind your fingers. Grind your brush. There we go. You take a look. Cylinder. All nice and cleaned up. Next, make sure you grind your wash. The grinder itself, and you can see the swim is coming right off. Not too hot to handle. Do it right away. We have made the mistake of not washing it right away. And then the soy milk, the soybeans, the almonds, the cashews, whatever nut or whatever you're using to make your plant based milk with will stick and make it hard for it to clean off later. And there it is, all clean. Later, I'm going to show you the trick that Miomat told me that we are able to actually clean this really clean. I will check out to see how well their advice works. Now that we've rinsed off the grinding part really well, it's ready for the next time I'm going to use it. Now we're going to strain our milk. You must strain your milk. Now Miomat comes with this specific strainer right here, this one. We find it's good, it's a nice metal mesh, but we said we want a little finer strain. So we went online and found this one. You see it's more of a cheesecloth type mesh. So we're now using a finer strainer. This one's worked well, it's worked wonderful for years, but we like to have less pulp in our soy milk. So we're gonna use the fine strainer. We're just gonna show you exactly how much soy milk you're gonna get. Why do I have a spoon? Because the fine mesh is going to grab the pulp and it's going to make it harder to take off. So we're going to spoon away some of that pulp, let the thinner non-pulp soy milk through. When the pulp's down, we can keep going. Now, sure, I can squeeze out more soy milk on this little thing. This just drops now. And let's take a look at how much soy milk we actually got. Looks like it's close to one liter, or about four cups of soy milk, from a little cup of this of soybeans. So now what you can do is you can put this into a jar, put it in the refrigerator, cool it for later. I've done that, had on my cereal. It's wonderful. It replaces very good soy milk. Or maybe you are a person like me who likes to drink hot soy milk. So I prepared myself a little bowl of the hot soy milk. So let me give it a quick taste. See if it's as good as it's been for this full year. Mm. Now, if you've seen the video where I went to a Chinese breakfast restaurant and had their soy milk, you will hear me say that their soy milk is good, but not as good as the homemade fresh. And I still believe that's true. This is really good, really good soy milk. It's homemade fresh, it's soybeans only, nothing else added, no salt, no sugar, and it's a very mighty tasty drink. And if you're worried about washing the basin, it works the same way as washing the cylinder you have here. All you do is just rinse it off, wipe it off really well on the inside. Do not soak the whole thing in the sink. Do not put it in the dishwasher because that's going to ruin the electronics, but all you have to do is wipe it off just like wiped off the cylinder, and it's going to be just clean and ready for the next use. Very easy to take care of. So after that wonderful tasting soy milk, I also went ahead and made soup last night, but I'm not going to show you how to make it yet. That's going to come a little later in the video. First, I want to show you a way you can polish this. So into the new mat, it's going two tablespoons of vinegar. And let's put enough of the water, put it in between the 1100 and 1300 milliliter marks. And the water level is now between the two marks, between 1100 milliliters and 1300 milliliters. Want to make sure to put on the grinder cylinder. I'm going to clean everything. See if it's going to shine this up. I put the lid on top, plug it in. And now we're going to choose cereal milk. And hit the start button. We're gonna let this run its course. It's gonna be about 30, 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes long. And in the end, we're gonna compare before and after. Does it make the stainless steel shiny? Like Mio Matt says it will. 
Now the process is done, and it took 30 minutes to finish. Thank you, Editor Barry, for putting in the time, because you can actually see the time, whereas we could not. So now it's time to take a look inside. It'll dump out the water, wash it out, rinse it out, because I put out the vinegar flavor in my next batch of whatever I'm cooking. But I have some theories that it's probably not going to clean it up cleanly, make a nice shine that you might expect compared to before, because... Why does it get dull? Because often people are using tap water full of minerals. Good stuff, but it, it sticks onto your stainless steel. But I have not been using tap water when I'm cooking soy milk. Not once. It's always the filtered water that I use. That's what I'm using here, filtered water. So I'm going to bet it didn't really clean it up like you might think. But let's let Future Berry tell you what it looks like. Future Berry here, and as I'm looking at the top part of the meal mat, there doesn't really seem to be very much difference, maybe slight, but it's hard to tell the lighting. But look at the base in there. You can see the two, the left is the before, the right is the after, and there is a slight difference, I believe, and the left side is a little darker stain, and the right side has lifted the stain ever so slightly. It's still there, but it is a little better. So. Passberry, you were wrong on this one. Oh, so I guess it still cleaned it up a little better. But don't let these results stop you from trying this in your own home with your own milk maker, that whatever you're using. Go ahead, see if this method polishes up your stainless steel and leave a comment down below and you can tell me that I was wrong and it had no effect. Being that there is a still a slight discoloration that you can see on the bottom of the meal mat. Miamat came back with another way that we can possibly clean the bottom. A simple solution. Doesn't take much work. Doesn't take any time at all, hardly, apparently. So let's give it a try. And two tablespoons of distilled vinegar. Add to that one tablespoon of baking powder. Should see some foaming action. Chemical reaction. Now the foaming reaction is what's actually going to clean it. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is just that quick. Didn't take long at all. Maybe that was a little too much baking soda. But that's what I saw online. Two parts vinegar, one part baking soda. All right, now let's wipe it out, rinse it out, see if it's done its job. After a quick scrape with the sponge, we then rinsed it out in warm water very well so that we don't have any vinegar baking soda smell in the next thing that we cook. And once again, I'll have to rely on Future Berry to give you the results. Thank you, Bass Berry. Wow, take a look at the results. My gosh, that is a much cleaner in the after shot than the before shot. Wow, this is something I'll have to use on my other kitchen appliances that are full of stainless steel to make them bright and shiny. Back to you, Past Barry. Thank you, Future Barry. And if you got different results using this same method, please leave a comment down below because we'd love to hear the different results. Now that you know the trick to clean out the hard water deposits, let's take a look and see how to make the luscious, tasteful, and beautifully succulent mushroom soup using the meal map. Sometimes we make wonderful soups. Like you look at my tomato soup recipe that I got from meal map themselves. Modify it to your own taste and it is wonderful. A fresh tomato soup, not from a can. And as vegan as you want it to be. So today though, since my family's not a big fan of tomato soup, we're going for a vegan mushroom soup. You can use any stock you want. We're using vegetable stock to keep it vegan. I um, also might add some creamy milk to go inside the soy milk we just made in fact i can pour some of that inside if i need the extra juice we got some potatoes mushrooms these are 
Baby Bellas, our favorite. And to make it creamy as well, well, you know how this makes milk from nuts? Guess what? Add a cup of nuts, your favorite nuts. In this case, we're using cashews. Our favorite nut we can put inside, as well as garlic for flavor, salt and pepper, and you're ready to make a wonderful, wonderful soup. So let's see how it works. Take the lid off. You can see we just cleaned it. I just cleaned it. And you can see that it looks pretty darn clean just from rinsing out and using a sponge to wipe off the bottom. Well, we're going to see after this soup if we can make it even cleaner. So let's go ahead and put in our ingredients. I like to start with the potatoes and the nuts too. Add the nuts. Put in the mushrooms. Now you notice these are all chopped. So these are all washed and chopped vegetables. It's better to chop them up a little bit small so that the grinder doesn't work as hard. All the ingredients are very close to the 1100 millimeter line, which is very important. You don't want to go above 1100 or 1300 milliliter line. That's where the broth and the milk will come in. All right, so we got our garlic, our mushrooms, and we're gonna add some salt and pepper, fresh ground salt and pepper for flavor. But a little bit of pepper. Fresh ground is most important when you actually are after cooking. Before cooking, it's not gonna matter whether you use fresh ground or jar. You can't taste the difference when you're cooking the pepper. So I'm gonna finish up the rest of the vegetable stock. But if you needed a whole 1300, you could just use vegetable stock only, or you can fill the rest with water if you don't have milk. But if you've made your own soy milk or your own plant-based milk you wanna make, you can go ahead and fill it up to the line using that milk. Once you put the ingredients in, notice the grinding cylinder is no longer here. You do not use the grinding cylinder unless you're making plant-based milk. If you're making the soups or the smoothies, anything else, generally do not use the grinding cylinder. Set it down, pour it out, plug it in. Use the flashing light, so you hit the select button. Now in this case, we're gonna choose the chunky soup. You can also choose the creamy soup, which is gonna cream it up even more. We're gonna go chunky soup. When it's done, it's going to be nice and hot, just like the soy milk is nice and hot. So let's go ahead and hit start. And in about 35 to 40 minutes, the soup is ready. So about 25, 30 minutes later, we have now a wonderful, creamy mushroom soup. So let's see. Again, you're gonna wash this off right away. Now, after having washed that clean, let's dish out some creamy mushroom soup. Ooh, and it is really hot. I can already feel it from here, it is really hot. Take a look. You can see potatoes weren't fully crushed. That's fine, you can see the mushrooms still have pretty big pieces. The nuts, on the other hand, are really fine and soft small, those soaked nuts that we soaked overnight. Now I made a mushroom soup here, but truthfully you can use any vegetables you still have in your fridge that you want to use in a soup. Make whatever you like. Zucchini, you can add radishes, you can add tomatoes, make a tomato soup, all that good stuff. Don't have to worry what other people add to your soup. You can just add whatever ingredients you like and make the soup your own. Some garlic for flavor, sometimes you want to put onion there, maybe you want some onion for flavor. This thing will make the soup for you, grind it up, and you can see the size for the chunky soup. So let's get a good mouthful. Mmm. Oh, that is very nice. A little creaminess from the soy milk we added. Some wonderful flavoring from the mushrooms. Potato adds a little bit of starchiness to it. The fulfilling part. Uh, the nuts, a very nice crunch, slight crunch, it's kind of soft crunch, very nice texture with those nuts in there. Mm, this is a homemade soup that you just can't get from a store. So the Mio Mat is a really great device that makes plant-based milks and other things. And you need to find out some other recipes for soups, so try out this video right here and see another wonderful soup recipe that you can make right in your own home.